So just how serious is this problem of lead? I spoke to an expert. Columbia University's David Rosner is also author of Entry Point, A Lead Poisoning Crisis Enters Its Second Century. Well, the accountability really goes deep into the history. We've been polluting ourselves for a century now with this material. It's all over the place. It's in everything. And uh, somewhere, some places it's worse. Clearly, it's largely a problem in, in poor communities, in uh, largely African-American communities and, and Hispanic communities where housing is disintegrating, where plumbing hasn't been maintained, where absentee landlords have allowed properties to go to, go to hell. Uh, it's been a um, kind of an ugly history of a century of polluting without having anyone held accountable. Uh, it's kind of an amazing story in Flint because, after all, it really were you know it really was the citizens of Flint who um, really brought this to brought this to the public's attention. Uh, without citizens marching, without people protesting, without they're making a big fuss, uh, we would have had another group of children damaged and another community destroyed and we wouldn't have hardly noticed. Um, but it's really, you know, that popular action that got the attention of uh, the professionals. It wasn't the professionals or the politicians who noticed it or did anything about it. You know, what's interesting, David, is, is you've taken a much deeper dive, and that is probably one of the problems with the finger pointing. It allows, uh, actually, these elected officials to avoid this deeper debate, doesn't it? That's exactly right. Uh, the real problem is that we have created a huge number of flints throughout the country. Uh, we've created this industrial disaster over a century. And by trying to make flint into an exception rather than the rule, what we've done is we've avoided any kind of public responsibility. Certainly, you know, uh, the governor's actions in Flint, Michigan, and the public officials' reactions in Flint, Michigan, were just absolutely horrendous. I mean, the idea that they would have learned about the problem of the water supply uh, literally a year and a half before uh, ever doing anything about it is uh, an act of, uh, of malicious, almost, uh, well, I guess it is actually criminal, a uh, criminal act. So I'm glad that they did that. But if it only becomes that there were a few officials who made a mistake, and that's why the crisis developed, uh, we're in real trouble because there are many flints. There are flints all over the country. There's uh, Cleveland and Jackson, Mississippi, and Newark, New Jersey, uh, even parts of you know, New York that have lead in their water, lead on their walls. Uh, we have huge amounts of lead all over, and uh, we know it. So uh, we can't see Flint as just the act of just a few individuals. We have to understand it as really a deeper problem of something we as a culture and society have created and which we have to address as a culture and a society. You talked about that political will. Without it, what's the legacy as we see children growing up in Jackson, Mississippi, and Cleveland, and Flint exposed to lead at these levels? What will be the legacy? The legacy is we're going to have more and more generations of children who are damaged, and we're going to find this problem facing us in 50 years. And we're going to say to ourselves, how is it that a generation ago, or two generations ago, when people were faced with this crisis and were faced by this issue, how is it that they morally and ethically were able to avoid addressing it? How could they say that for the next 50 years, we are going to let our children be exposed to a neurotoxin, a neurotoxin that's going to change their lives, that are going to alter their life's, life's chances, that is going to destroy their futures? Uh, I think that's the terrible legacy, is that we're going to look back on ourselves uh, in 50 years and say what a, what a morally bankrupt society that was at that moment.